gamma decay. In this video, we will define gamma decay and complete nuclear equations using gamma decay. We'll discuss applications of it. Gamma emission occurs when energy is released in the form of a photon in the gamma portion of the EM spectrum. This generally occurs after another decay process. So an alpha or beta decay will occur, and this will create a metastable nuclei, or in other words, a nuclei that is in an excited state due to the previous decay process. The gamma decay occurs when it rearranges into a stable form, releasing the high energy radiation. So for example, let's look at iron 60. Iron 60 can undergo beta minus decay to turn in to cobalt. When this happens, we get a metastable nuclei. It's sometimes denoted with a little n next to the mass number. This then has a gamma decay that occurs right afterwards, allowing the cobalt to come down to its low energy state. These are often written all in one equation as well, where you would just simply write the cobalt 6027, the beta particle, and then the gamma particle all on one line. Let's do an example. Nickel 56 is produced by supernovae. It decays to cobalt 56 and then to iron 56. This produces a light curve that astronomers can detect. Assuming that at each stage a metastable nuclei is formed, write three nuclear equations involving going from nickel 56 to iron 56. We'll start by looking at the three species that we'll be talking about. 56 nickel. Remember, we get the number of protons using the periodic table and looking at their z's. From here we can write each equation. We'll start with the first one. Now, the problem didn't tell you what kind of decay it is, but you can figure that out by comparing the numbers. So it goes from a 56 to a 56 mass unit, which means that our change in mass is zero. But it goes from a 28 to a 27 proton count, which means we must have a plus one to balance that, leaving us knowing that it must be positron decay. Now we can go on to iron 56. We know that the iron 56 portion forms a light curve that astronomers can detect, which means that after it undergoes its first decay, it will undergo gamma emission. And so we're going to make this a metastable nuclei in order to show that it is going to decay again in release gamma radiation. Here our mass unit once again doesn't change, and our charge changes by one, and so we'll put a plus one there. And now we can do our last one, which is simply to take the iron 56 and go from a metastable nuclei to a stable nuclei by releasing gamma radiation. Now, I'll write out explicitly what I mentioned on the last slide. A lot of times you might actually see this written as one equation, like this, where everything is written at once. Um, and that's perfectly okay. In this case, I asked you to write them out separately, but you'll often see them written together. Let's talk about where this is used. We mentioned in our discussion of PET scans that how we can use radioactive nuclei in order to see where problematic areas of the body might be. Because the different radioactive nuclei may be taken up by different areas of the body. So PET scanning is interesting in that it's taken up so many different places in so many different ways that we can use it for a wide variety of imaging, but we can use other radioactive nuclei as well. Technium-90 is one of the options. We can use this to look for tumors in various spots in the body. So there's some spots on the body that'll show up dark and we should know what that is, for instance, our heart, but there's other places where it shouldn't normally be dark and is. So for instance, in this patient, there's something wrong right there and we can see that. We can see here and here that there's spots that wouldn't normally be there. And so the doctors compare what should be to what is to find spots that could be problematic. Cobalt-60 is what we call a gamma knife, actually. And this is one of the very common radiation treatments for brain tumors. 
And so they are able to target the radiation. The brain tumor takes up the radiation more than the surrounding areas and it can be very targeted. Of course, there's usually a little bit of damage to the brain as well, but it's, it's better than the alternative. And so the way that the gamma knife works is we use neutron bombardment to make cobalt go from cobalt-59 to cobalt-60, which is unstable. And then the cobalt-60 undergoes beta decay, and this becomes our treatment because you get beta decay and gamma radiation, and that gamma radiation can target the tumor in order to possibly kill it. And of course, we can't forget the Hulk. Okay, so not really, but it deserves at least a cute picture. So in review, gamma emission occurs after another decay process has already occurred. It allows a high energy arrangement of the nuclei to relax to a lower energy arrangement at the, that time releasing a photon of energy.